how does the market, how does the economy find its way out of a recession? It doesn't know how to anymore. In fact, you could argue that the Fed has broken the underlying ability for the economy to get out of a recession. It's not going to be like a depression. I don't I don't foresee that in the next couple of years. It's more like going to be a tough economy that's going to last for years. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for February 28th through March 7th, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature two coins from the Royal Canadian Mint. The sought-after 2013 Silver Pronghorn Antelope at $3.99 over spot, and the 2022 Silver Maple at $3.40 over spot. The Silver Pronghorn Antelope was made for the Low Mintage Limited Run Wildlife Series where just one million coins were minted over the course of six months and then never issued again. With a focus on beautiful design, a face value of $5 Canadian and RCM's strict 4 nines fine purity, these coins further add a degree of rarity to the mix. They come 25 to a tube, 500 to a box, and are available at just $3.99 over spot. We also have 2022 Silver Maples on special. Silver maples were the first silver sovereign coins to be minted at four nines fine purity and remain one of the most in-demand coins today. They come 25 to a tube, 500 to a box, and are available at the lowest premium we've seen in more than a year, at just $3.40 over spot. Both coins this week are also IRA eligible, and if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order these specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Gareth Soloway from InTheMoneyStocks.com. Gareth, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, true pleasure, Elijah. Thanks for having me back. Well, it's great to have you. And I did want to look at the charts today for all the markets. Uh, it seems just like a crazy world out there. I know that I kind of wanted to start with a macroeconomic backdrop before we get to those. You're calling for a very prolonged recession, possibly. Can you explain why? Yeah, so a lot of that has to do with the fact is that we've been kind of addicted to Federal Reserve quantitative easing for a long period of time, right? So, so the market has not really experienced a recession in basically almost you know 15 years. And what that does is it makes the market not know how to deal with a slowdown without Federal Reserve printing. And so my fear is that as we see the economy slow down due to higher interest rates, and we now have the Fed funds rate around 5%, you're going to start to see a recession kicking in probably in the second half of this year. And the kicker is going to be that inflation is unlikely to get back below 2%. It might get close at maybe 3%, 2.5%. But if the Fed won't come out and print right away, how does the market, how does the economy find its way out of a recession? It doesn't know how to anymore. In fact, you could argue that the Fed has broken the underlying ability for the economy to get out of a recession. So I think that's where I'm looking at it from, from that kind of vantage point. And I do think that that's the likely scenario here. We're facing, it's not going to be like a depression. I don't I don't foresee that in the next couple of years. It's more like going to be a tough economy that's going to last for years. Now, you're saying years, do you think like five or 10 years or what? what is the time frame on this? That's super hard. I mean, my guess is, is it's going to be at least two to three years. And then my guess is the economy will start to get worse and worse, which will then force the hand of the Fed. So even if we're at, let's say, 2.5% inflation, if you all of a sudden see 10% unemployment, the Fed will feel forced to act at that point, And then you'll get some sort of stimulus going again. The only problem is it starts the merry-go-round again, where you have then higher inflation coming in over the next few years. So, I mean, this is one of those things where it's like a, a drug addict, when you get addicted to it, it's very hard to get off the juice, if you will. Um, and that's what the economy is facing now. Now, if we look at gold, uh, obviously gold and silver are markets that we track very closely here on Liberty and Finance. Do you want to discuss what your outlook right now for gold is? It seems like we saw a rally, a pullback, and now a little bit of a rally here. But what is your outlook going forward? 
Yeah. So let's take a look at the gold chart because I think it is a fascinating chart. So we know that gold was the best performer between the S&P 500 and Bitcoin in 2022. And right now it's having a very solid year. It's not outpacing the S&P or Bitcoin yet, but my guess is it ultimately will by year end. And what we can see here is you had this beautiful rally up. You broke out above this area here on the gold daily chart. You continued up and then we pulled back. And notice where the pullback took us. It took us right to the previous pivot point. And that's a picture-perfect chart setup, right? So, so basically, this was where I was looking to accumulate gold again, and that's exactly what I did. Now, again, what we've seen is a, a four or five-day move up. Now you're getting a pause day. But looking at the bigger picture, for me, when I look at this bigger move, I am expecting gold to retrace to the all-time highs around 2070. And actually, by year end, I'd be somewhat surprised if we're not through that level. So I do see upside here, absolutely. Um, I continue to be a big bull on gold, mainly because it offers protection in an uncertain economy but it also it offers an inflation hedge, right? So, so if the economy spins into recession and inflation comes down, you also have the positives of gold. And Or if inflation stays high and the economy still ramps up, you still have that side of gold as well. So it's kind of like a good side on, on either in either case of the economic uh, situation. Now, that 1800 level, that seems to be where we retrace to. Do you see that being broken down? Because I know some analysts out there are looking for much lower gold prices in the short term. Do you think we just have upside from here? So it definitely not necessarily just pure upside, but in the very least, this 1800 level is major support. We saw the bounce so far. So, so what I'm going to be looking for is you have a little bit of a trend line here, right? So we can connect these two previous pivot highs. It's around 1940 on gold. Can we go up and test that? If we do, do we break through? If you break through the low end, of the 1800 level, it's going to bring you down to this area down here. Let me put a trend line in there so we can keep our bearings. All right. So, so for me, at least based on what I'm seeing, I, I actually think that this was a bigger breakout on gold that we're just seeing a natural retrace on. So we should ultimately continue higher. But in the off chance that I'm wrong and you do break 1800, you have more major support at 1725. Now, what about for silver, the kind of gold's cousin there that's uh, moot? often moves faster than gold. Yes, for sure. And it certainly has percentage wise, no doubt about it. So we've seen again, same kind of thing. It rolled over sharply here. We did hit this little area of support. It's having a little bit of a down day today. I could see silver having a little bit more downside where we go to retrace to this longer term trend line here, which would be around the 1930 level on silver. But I think ultimately, if you if you have this kind of bigger picture than just the next month or so, you continue to view the fact is inflation will remain elevated. We've seen, you know, it's so interesting. We saw recent Recently, over the last month, people getting very excited, inflation was coming down. And then just in the last couple of weeks, PCE numbers came in a little bit hotter and people are now saying, wait a minute, maybe it's not coming in as quickly. So I think, again, this is going to be something that's persistent. I don't see us going below 2% inflation for probably years. And I think that's going to make for the metals overall to have very, very good upside. Now, the only kicker with silver is that it's industrial as well as a store of safety and inflation hedge. So you have to just be ready for more volatility with silver. Now, as for the general stock market, it seems like we had a rough 2020. Uh, your outlook for that this year, are you, a lot of people are, are seeing this and saying, you know, this is just the beginning of a ma major crash uh, in the future. Yeah, so so I am in the camp that I do see significant downside from here. I think that investors are, are there, there's these phases when a bull market ends in the preliminary portions of a bear market where investors get very excited because they remember the good times, right? And the good times were Dogecoin and SHIB going up, you know, hundreds of X times, uh, maybe more. And and like, you know, AMC and GameStop and all these other ones, right? So, so you have these interim periods in markets where people say, oh, well, maybe we're going to get to back to that. Let's buy everything that was running during that period. And you'll see those little stocks pop. And we have seen that quite a bit. Uh, my bigger issue is even though we've closed above this, this trend line, right? So this is a trend line that, that goes all the way from the all-time highs on the S&P, and you have had a bounce off of that. My bigger issue remains that we haven't even retested the pre-COVID uh, highs here. 
And again, if we look at what what's holding this market up. So you have, obviously you have the the hope that the Fed pauses, but even if the Fed pauses, they're not gonna lower interest rates anytime soon. Um, Powell's made that super clear that, that he doesn't wanna repeat the mistakes of Paul Volcker back in the 80s. So you have long-term interest rates staying probably elevated for a significant amount of time until the economy starts to, to go into a recession, which is kind of, you could argue that the Fed wants that. I mean, essentially they've said they want that. So if we go into a recession, you're going to see an earnings recession. And if that happens, then valuations are still way, way too high here. So at some point, I do think see another collapse back down. Uh, target for me on the S&P, first target would be this 3380 level. And then eventually, I think you have to go back to this long-term trend line, right? So if we go to the weekly chart, there's this long-term trend line that goes back to the lows in 09 when we came out of the Great Recession. And that trend line hasn't been tagged in the longest period, right? So if we look at this trend line, there was a little bit of a gap here. This was about three years. Then it was about four years or so here. And then another kind of dip of about three years. And then really just between then and COVID, it was only a year to two years. We've now haven't tested this trend line since 2020, right? So we're now getting to the longer end of that. In addition, we were so far above it. It makes me almost feel like we almost need to even go below that. So I won't go this to that extent and say, hey, we're definitely going below that long-term trend line. But I think the 3000 level, it's a round number. It's got to be where we're headed back to. Now, for those invested in the market, it seems like um, a very difficult situation right now. How do you play this? Because if people are going to be, you know, you're still looking at high inflation, but you're seeing this, you know, your investments fall if you're invested in the stock market. What do people do? Yeah, and this is a this is a tricky situation. So I, I think what you look to do is you look to to basically play defensive names right now. Um, you play some gold plays. Some mi gold miners are very interesting to me down here at these levels. Like if we take a look at Newmont Mining, for instance, uh, this had a major retrace on the daily chart where it came into all these triple support levels, right? And we can see it starting to curl back up. So if you're a fan of gold and you think gold does have some upside over the next six to 12 months, the miners should be a direct recipient of some upside as well. I also think that defensive plays could be something like Amgen. Um, if you look at Amgen here, you know, the market was, was falling when Amgen was going up. And then ever since the market's kind of caught a bid, that's when Amgen put in its highs and it's come down to major support, actually making a little bit of a bull flag down here. So I think you look for these defensive names, these names that, again, pay a decent dividend. They do relatively well in both bull and bear markets or in recessions. And a drug stock like Amgen would definitely fit the mold there. So, so again, I think the key is always remember that just because it's a bear market doesn't mean that there's no opportunity. It just means you have to look a little bit harder, right? That's the key. You definitely do have to look a bit harder. And it seems like, at least for these coming years, people really have to pay attention to what's happening in the macro economy and what's happening in the markets. One of the key indicators out there that's at least had a inverse correlation recently with gold is the US dollar. Can you share your perspective on the US dollar? Because we've seen some wild moves recently. Yeah, it really has been, right? So especially over the last week, we've seen these big candles to the green side, then the next day, red, green, red, green, looks like a Christmas tree almost. But I think the key is we did hit resistance on the dollar here. And the, and it looks to me like the dollar's trying to curl over and come back in. Now, even if we do fall, there's not a lot of downside. 103.60 is going to be some good support. But again, you know whether it goes up or down near term, the longer, bigger picture remains bearish for me. I think that you're going to look back on this and we'll all look back on these dollar highs and say that that was a long-term pivot high on the dollar, mainly because I think that, again, as the economy starts to weaken, you're going to see interest rates, long-term interest rates starting to come in just a little bit short-term as well, and the dollar will weaken as well, assuming that there will be a point in the future where the Fed does have to print again, which is dilutive to the U.S. dollar. So again, for me, we're very close to the end of the rate hike policy cycle. It's just more of an issue that I don't see the Fed lowering rates at least for the next six to 12 months. And I think that's going to be problematic for the economy, but the dollar should start to lower itself based on that. Can you expand on why you think that gold is still going to do well uh, when interest rates remain high? Yeah. And I, and I think the biggest thing with gold, right, is, the, is its performance during this period, right? I mean, we went from basically zero interest rates to about 5% on the 10-year, or excuse me, 4% on the 10-year, but Fed funds, again, pushing north of that that level, obviously. So what, we, what we've what we seen is gold has held up amazingly well in spite of high interest rates. And if if interest rates are getting near a peak, 
then you actually should see gold actually perform very, very well. And assuming at some point, like I do, that that even if it takes six to 12 months for them to lower rates a little bit, that's going to kick in even more interest in gold. And I think there's there's this feeling now where you know people are a little bit more shaky on crypto. We don't know the regulations. We know Silvergate recently, FTX, like these other things where, where you had Bitcoin as an obvious alternative to gold. It's not so obvious right now. And it's pushing a lot of money towards the gold market as well, as again, people are saying, hey, listen, what's the good trusty safety hedge here? And that remains gold. So I really do think that, that that's the key. A down dollar would be good for gold. Uh, interest rates topping out would be good for gold, even if they don't get lowered. All of those things, again, should be should be a positive for the, the yellow metal. And on cryptocurrencies, a lot of people following the FTX scandal have really lost faith in them. What is your uh, outlook for cryptocurrencies going forward? And are you still um, bullish on them? Yeah, so long term, I'm still very bullish. And again, important to, to recognize that I'm bullish on Ethereum and Bitcoin. I'm undecided on ones like Solana and Cardano. I do think they'll probably survive, but it's hard to gauge exactly how they do in the longer term. But I do think, for instance, Bitcoin longer term, very, very bullish still. Now, in the near term, though, it's important to recognize that I still see further downside. So I've been a bear since 69,000. Um, there's bounces along the way. We've seen one of the great bear market rallies here. But what we can see here is you almost have that same M top that formed when we were at the all time highs. Like if we go back to this chart, look at that same sort of chart pattern, which is exactly what we just created on a very smaller scale. So the question now is we had a bear flag here, it broke down and now we're making another bear flag. And my guess is we are headed back to 18,000 and change in the next, probably in the next month or so. So I do think you have downside on it. I still have a lower target. I still don't think Bitcoin has fully bottomed out in this cycle. And I still think that, again, too many people are bullish on Bitcoin and crypto. Like as soon as it pops, a million people come out on Twitter all like this is the new bull cycle. Bear markets, if you look back at 99 to 2000, when when the bull market ended in, in dot coms or in 2007, when the bear markets followed and finally ended, no one dared be bullish. And that's not happening in crypto yet. People are still too eager to jump on the bull bandwagon. So for me, that's that's a dead on signal to be really careful with crypto over the next couple of months as we could see lower lows. And do you think the FTX scandal really impacted Bitcoin for the long term or is it just kind of a blip here that we saw, you know, one exchange uh, falling instead of it having intrinsically anything to do with Bitcoin itself? Yeah, I, in a weird way, I actually view it as a positive. I know that sounds super weird that that FTX's collapse could be a, a longer term positive for Bitcoin, but I think it spurred the onset of regulation that's coming a lot faster. I think if FTX didn't happen, if Celsius didn't happen, if you had nothing going on shady in crypto, then there'd be less push to regulate it because people, investors in crypto wouldn't be up in arms that they're losing money left and right. And I think ultimately for the health of cryptocurrency and the, the sector, you have to have transparency and regulation and all these things. So in a weird way, it's almost like a, a longer term positive, even though it causes short term pain. No, that's very good. And uh I guess before we let you go, what are your, if you want to reiterate for our viewers, kind of your general outlook for the economy and what are some of the main things that people should be paying attention to who are invested in the markets right now? Yeah, so so definitely this Friday, the jobs report, that's going to be a big, big e economic data point. And then on the I think it's on March 22nd or so, we have the Federal Reserve next meeting on interest rates. I'm expecting a 50, uh, 25 basis point hike, not a 50 basis point hike, but I think they'll continue with their 25s. Uh, and then really the market will be gauging what Jerome Powell says and his guidance going forward. I think that's the key right now. Everyone's focusing on the Fed. When do they they halt their hikes? When do they kind of you know move their stuff? And then obviously economic data, mainly CPI, PPI numbers, uh, as well as the jobs data this Friday are going to be absolutely huge. So in general, I remain overall net bearish on the markets. I have more shorts out there than I have longs right now. Um, but again, be aware that markets and bear markets can be very volatile, but I am overall short the market. Where can our viewers find you online if they're interested in learning more? Yeah, absolutely. So Twitter's the best place at Gareth Soloway on Twitter. I post, you know, usually a couple times a day, really insightful charts, analysis, trade signals. And then obviously, if you're interested in stocks in the money, stocks.com. If you're interested in crypto, verified investing crypto.com. All right, Gareth, once again, thank you so much for your time and God bless. Thank you. And you too. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, 
licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.